and five people shot and killed over a dozen shootings reported this weekend alone. The NYPD's response to the rise in gun violence is putting more cops on patrol from Friday through Sunday. For more than 30 years, the New York City Citizens Crime Commission, they have worked to make our streets safer not only by preventing crime, but also by calling for criminal justice reform, which we know is needed now more than ever. President Richard Aborn joins us this morning to discuss the commission's focus in the wake of all the protests. Good morning to you, Richard. Thank you for joining us. Good How are you doing? Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. You know, there have been accusations over the last couple of weeks of an NYPD slowdown, which is leading to this increase in crime. So how does the commission actually hold the NYPD accountable? And do you think there's actually a slowdown happening? I think it's but we I think we hold them accountable by being an honest broker. We try and get out there with facts. We don't try and engage in hyperbole. We try and report to the public things that are objective and, and verifiable and measurable. And in doing that, in essence, we let the truth speak for itself. We have no particular power. We don't have subpoena power or right. power to command hearings. But we do have access. We have access to the press. We have access to writing. And we have access to the public. The increase in crime is, is very, very serious. And what is going on is, is very hard to know. There are a large number of factors contributing to it. I don't think it's just the police. However, we do know that there is a sharp decrease in the number of arrests for illegal guns. And... If you look carefully at the data, the crime problem we're having is with illegal guns. It's with shootings and with murders. So we need to have a laser-like focus yeah. on illegal guns, and we need to have all branches of government focusing on that. Yeah, it just happened to be this weekend there, there were two people, a 49-year-old and a 40-year-old, stabbed to death at the same time you're talking about the guns. But, you know, you served as a former district attorney in Manhattan in the early 80s. There's been a lot of people talking about comparisons, right, between the 80s and today, right, where crime was rampant in the 80s. We know this. Do you think, when you look at what's happening today, that we're headed back to those times, or it's just too early to tell? Um, I don't think so. However, if you would ask me, would we be here a year ago, I would have said no. We, I would not predict this sharp rise in crime. So it is a bit hard to know, and the current indications are not positive. It is too soon to know, however. The big difference between the 1980s and now is that we've become much more sophisticated in how we reduce violent crime, a lot of the tactical operations in the NYPD have shifted. We've also become much more sophisticated. But have they worked? About you know, they, they've shifted, but have they worked? Because we're seeing different types of crime play, right? So when you look at what's happening on the streets right now and people saying, well, I don't trust the NYPD, what do you think is the path moving forward to restore that trust? Because without that, you really don't have much. Yeah, they have worked for the last 18 years, but you are absolutely right. We have a crisis of police legitimacy and the NYPD has got to do everything in its power to restore the trust between the community and the cops. That is just fundamental to crime reduction and crime prevention. If the community doesn't trust the police, they are not going to come forward with information. They're going to be less likely to comply with orders from the police. They're going to be less likely to help with uh, emerging situations. It is a critical component. There are many things the department can do. The department was on the right track. There were a lot of things going really well up until November, December this right. year. So we need to get back to those things. Yeah, because everything everything changed, obviously. You know, critics yeah. of the NYPD are saying the disciplinary process for officers is just too slow. It allows bad cops to stay on the force. We've seen this play out prior to the pandemic, right? So do you agree, disagree? Does the NYPD, when you look at it, have to be restructured? Um, I think that this price system is too slow. I actually did an oversight investigation in the NYPD a number of years ago and found the same thing. It's not only too slow, but it's not sufficiently transparent. The public has a right to know what's happening with officers who are brought up on charges, and the public has a right to know what happens when trials are held of officers who are charged with various misconduct offenses. So yes, I think the disciplinary system needs to be restructured. We need a first-in-class early warning system mm -hmm. so that we have a sense of what's going wrong with cops early in their careers, and we need to take rapid action. You know, one of the pillars of crime deterrence is firm and swift justice yes. with an emphasis on swift. That equally applies to police discipline. Yeah, and not only here in New York, but around the country as well. Transparency is That's everything right. in these kind of situations. Hey, Richard, thank you for your voice this morning. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Anytime.